It's 8.40 in the morning and I'm about to start my Anki review. So this morning I'm going to review Chinese, German, and uh, what was Marvel language? Oh, Esperanto. <laughs> Almost forgot about the most important one. Uh, so I've got to review those. But last night I was thinking about how I want to like push my Chinese to the next level because I do enjoy the way I'm doing it at the moment but I'm always thinking about like how can I improve the way I do things and one thing I was thinking was potentially doing like a HSK test now I'm assuming I'm somewhere around the level of HSK 3 maybe a little bit above maybe below I don't know um, but potentially I could set myself up with doing a HSK test three, finding out what I need to learn for that test and go and doing that. And that could be like a good way of like, just kind of tracking progression. But at the same time, I'm also kind of like, nah. like I don't like doing tests overall. Like, in fact, if you look at uh, my Esperanto um, studies, I've never taken an Esperanto test. And there was like a few years ago, there was this big thing about, you know, the, I think it was the um, European framework where they opened up to Esperanto and everyone was like, hey, if you speak Esperanto, go take the test, you know, to bump up the numbers of Esperanto speakers, etc. And people kept asking me to go do it, but I didn't want to do it because I just don't like doing tests in general. And I feel like if I go do it, I'm somehow going to fail it. I like I'm going to overanalyze every single question on the test and I'm going to answer incorrectly. And then I'm going to walk away feeling like, a total fraud with imposter syndrome on the next level type of thing. So I just never did it. And that may sound a bit weird, uh, but yeah, that's the truth of the matter. But at the same time, um, no one in the Chinese speaking community knows about me. So if I fail at a Chinese test miserably, it doesn't really matter. Like <laughs> it's, it's a different thing to fail at for me. But yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But first up, I'll probably do some research into that today, uh, but I've got, I've got to get these uh, Anki decks out of the way. Oh, and, and one last thing. So one of you guys commented, I've actually got the comment in here. Um, oh, it's such a long username. User GM2IY blah, blah, blah. Uh, they said like, they like doing Anki, but they end up getting like hundreds and hundreds of cards and then it just becomes too much. I totally know what you're talking about. So with Anki in my Chinese deck, I've actually like, I've got 150 new cards that I've created. So I'm like way ahead of schedule. I'm creating 30 to 40 cards a day. Um, and most days I do like 30 review, like 30 new reviews. And then maybe if like I'm feeling good that day, I'll chuck an extra 40 in there. But I've somehow ended up being like way ahead in card creation versus card absorption. Um, and I've actually set my cap at 50 reviews of like current cards uh, per day, which means I've actually got a massive backlog of reviews. Uh, but that doesn't bother me because the way I've set up my cards and I've built my system around, especially recently around the whole AI revolution um, and making like the sound files and all that type of stuff, I actually kind of, like I said, already know the words quite well by the time they go into the deck. Because I know a lot of people when they use Anki, they just like make a bunch of cards, but they don't prior study that stuff before it actually gets into the Anki and then they rely on Anki to actually learn it. I could never do that. Like I tried, that's why I can't download decks because if I download a deck, I didn't create those decks. I have no prior absorption of those cards. And to me, it's just like, it's totally overwhelming. So I always suggest like, if you're creating a card, you're putting it in your deck, make sure that before that card ends up in your deck, you've already like practiced it a good six times. And I don't just mean practice it as in say the same thing over and over six times on the spot. Like, I mean, you know, you've looked into the words of the sentence, you see what it, how it works together. Like yesterday in my video where I looked up the differences between two words visually, um, and then I created a bunch of sentences to wrap around it. And so basically I actually end up with six cards about the one particular word that include words that I've previously studied. So whether I've got cards in my backlog a lot or not really doesn't matter. They're just there because maybe six months down the line, I need like a hint type of thing. And the card creation process, it's all, it's, it's actually almost kind of pointless, but it forces me to go through a process of learn a word, wrap that word in related sentences, create audio, listen to the audio, then create speaking like cards, practice those speaking cards. And then I put that all into Anki and then the Anki thing's just like an extra additional stuff. So I say Anki is, it's meant to be just like the holder of knowledge that you've already acquired in a way. Okay, so let's start this review. So I've got, um, 
as you can see, I've got quite a bit of Chinese to do, um, and then also Esperanto. I added in 15 extra Esperanto words yesterday. One last thing I want to mention is this is something that always hits me when I get like a lot of cards to review. I'll look at this and I'll be like, oh, I really don't want to do like 80 plus because it's not really 80. It's like 50 review, then 30 new, which is like 60 cards. And then, you know, you're chucking that all on top. So it's like 140 cards just in my Chinese deck. And it's like, oh, I really don't want to do it. Um, and that happens sometimes. And the way I deal with it is I use a a method I kind of stole from David Goggins, who's big in the fitness industry, where he says, you know, if you really don't feel like doing something, just trick your brain into it. So say to your brain, you know what? I'm only gonna do five cards. So I'm just gonna start, do five cards, and I'm tapping out, I'm moving on. Uh, but what actually ends up happening is once you start your five cards, you, you then you get into the flow and your brain's like, you know what, we're, we're here, let's just do this. And then you just go through the whole lot. So I'm gonna quickly smash these out. Let's start with the uh, Esperanto. So, whale, baleno. Passes yam cent yaroi de post Esperanto en contukigis en chinion. So here I was practicing the accusative on China. Yeah. Mi surprisigis trovante ke ili mal emis informigi peri miai excursoi. Excursoi. Excusoi. Excusoi. I. Excusoi. I don't know why I put an R in there. Okay, so I'm not gonna wrong. Passes yam centiaroi de post Esperanto en conducigis en chinion. So again, I'm just gonna go through this whole Esperanto deck. If I find anything interesting, I'll let you guys know. Okay, easy one out of the way. That was the uh, Esperanto. So now I'm going to do the Chinese speaking. Um, according to this, I have about 100 plus cards to review. So let's quickly go. So we've got, the first one is the bold man is sitting next to the river. So, tu tou de nan ren zuo zai. Herbian. Tu tou de nan ren zuo zai herbian. Yep, cool. The container is grey. Um, ji zhong xiang shi hui se de. Yep, cool. Uh, the light is far away from me. Dong li wo hen yuan. Yep. Uh, the man is holding his hat. Na ge nan ren na jia ta de mao zi. Na ge nan ren na jia ta de mao zi. Gotta be careful. I have this tendency in Esperanto also to go uh, like halfway through a sentence where in like certain languages that actually is a word. Anyway, again, I'm just gonna smash through these. Okay, so work is starting in about five minutes. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly fire up some food while I continue this study. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some food out of the fridge. Let's do this. Uh, that dog is going away from me. Na zhi go li wo zhou kai lo. So, yeah, is that one? Yeah, so Kyla. Yeah, got it. Awesome. Okay. He's wearing jeans. Um, Ta Chongja. Niu Zai Ku. It is daytime. Since I shirt by 10. Oh my god, my cat is here again. No, I am not feeding you. Jojo Mao Jin. Han Tao Yan. Ta Zong Shi Sang Yao Wa Da Tui. Ni Wei Shima Sang Yao Wa Da Tui. Okay, so breakfast is ready. Uh, I've run out of time. I'm going to have to do the rest of the study during a break. Okay, so I've just finished my Chinese speaking. I now have remaining Chinese listen and German listen. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to get the German listen out of the way. It's only 50 cards and I don't have too much of time in this break. And I'm gonna hit the Chinese listening probably at lunchtime, and then I'll move straight into creating new cards because I always like to create new cards once I've reviewed everything. Now, also, in the last video, in the comments, there was a little bit of discussion around Latin. See, you guys probably don't know this, but a few years back, actually probably like six years back now, I actually spent a couple of months studying Latin from um, like this book where it's, I forget the name of the book, but I've still got the PDF. It's an amazing book. It basically uses a method similar to what I'm using now. However, I really want to find a text to speech system for Latin. Now I know that sounds kind of crazy, like why would you want to listen to Latin, like Latin's not really a spoken language anymore. But I want to create my cards first as audio cards, get a passive understanding of Latin, then come back later uh, and actually start like learning to speak Latin. Like the same as like how I'm doing with say German or Chinese type of thing. Um, and for me, languages come alive when I can hear them spoken. And I know there's some good YouTubers who do Latin stuff because I've followed them and I've checked them out. 
uh, but I really want a text-to-speech system and I'm hoping one exists, but I just couldn't find it. So if you guys know of one, please, please drop it in the comments below uh, because Latin will be the next language I'll be adding to my list um, at some stage in the future. Okay, so let's get this German out of the way, shall we? Der Mann wird angegriffen. Um, God, I gotta hear that again. Der Mann wird angegriffen. Oh, I, the man, so it's obviously the man something. Angegriffen. I'm, I know it's, it's like right there. Okay, no, I don't. The man is being attacked. Oh. Der Mann klettert auf den Käfig. The man climbs on the cage. Der Jäger steht neben dem Käfig. Uh, the hunter is standing next to the cage. Tu was dagegen. Do something about it. Das Spielzeug. The toy. Neben ihrem Bett steht ein Stuhl. There's a chair next to um, her bed. Überall ist Gras und Felsen. Everywhere is grass and rocks. Ist in der Küche. It's in the kitchen. Braune Augen. Brown eyes. 17. 17. Zip. 17. Why did I freeze on that? <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm gonna continue with this German and get this out of the way. Okay, so now we're down to the last big review of the day and that is Chinese Listen. Let's go. Do you want me to give your mum a phone call? Do you want me to give your mum a phone call? So he is an employee. 他是员工. Who's knocking at the door? 谁在敲门? I uploaded a video. 我上传了一个视频. I can't help him. 我不能帮助他. Or it could be I can't help her. So I promised that I'd share some interesting things that I find along the way. So one of these things is uh, in Chinese. Uh, so you've got the word for tentacle, say, of an octopus or a squid, which is chu shou, or you could also say chu wan. Anyway, you've got this word, and then you've got starfish. Now, in English, when we refer to the arms of a starfish, we say the arms. But in Chinese, they say the tentacles of the starfish. So when I discovered that, I was like, that's kind of cool. I like it. I guess they're not really arms either, because they don't have fingers. But like, it was just kind of like left field, random... It, it's just not something that I would expect to be different. Okay, sorry, I'm on a roll right now. Here's another one, okay? So with crabs. So crabs have claws in English. Um, and the Chinese word, well, there's a few words, again, but uh, one of the words is ao, which is literally like the proper word for a claw, primarily the big claw or whatever. But then they've also got qianzi, which translates as, I guess, claw, but also tongs. So they are the tongs you use in the kitchen, which now that I know that, every time I grab the tongs in the kitchen, I'm like, give me the claws. What is the state of your grandma's health? Um, some clams are completely black. A mosquito? Can you describe what this fish looks like? Okay, Whew. done with the Chinese review. That means all my Anki reviews are now done, except for like this random little bit about handwriting, which is right here. Um, I don't actually really learn how to write Chinese, but I do learn how to write some characters simply so that I can identify them if they look very similar to another one. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I've got to get back to work, obviously. Um, next time you see me will probably be lunchtime when I will start adding some new Chinese cards to my deck. It's lunchtime, which means it's study time. Okay, so what we're going to do today is um, we'll build a little bit on what we learned yesterday, but also last night when I was like randomly walking along with the wife to the station, um, there was a couple of like things that I wanted to say that I just couldn't think of how to say them. And one of them was like a super common like verb, which is accept. So I don't know why I don't know that verb. So I'm gonna literally use that verb a lot today. 
Um, and then before, when I was with the cat in the kitchen, I said, why are you always wanting to bite me? And I have this structure that I say a lot, um, like why something, something always want stuff. And I, I believe I've been saying it right, but I've never actually checked. So I'm going to be doing that. And also there is this, okay, bear with me for a second. I'm going to find you a picture of it. Mud skipper. Now, mud skipper, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but it is this beautiful fish right here. You see that guy? This is called a mud skipper and it's a fish that can actually like hop across the land and into the mud and it's found in causeways and stuff. And the reason I'm randomly bringing this up is because I was trying to tell a story to my father-in-law and it was about when I was a kid and I'd chase mud skippers and by God, I did not know how to describe this animal. So I'm going to learn its name. Okay, so let's start with, uh, Let's figure out if ChatGPT even knows how to say mud skipper in Chinese. And I am going to like take whatever it says with the like the largest grain of salt and I'm gonna go look up what it suggests. So I'm gonna say, hey, how do I say a uh, mud skipper as in the fish that can jump across mud uh, with its measure word. I'm assuming its measure word is just tiao like every other fish. But we'll find out in a sec. So it says, Ejer ni tiao yu. I'm going to take whatever it says with the biggest grain of salt. So this is what it's suggesting. It's saying, ah, jir is like a, like a small little creature or something like that. Or also, it's used in other contexts. But ni tiao yu. So that's mud uh, jump fish. Makes sense, but that might be just a direct translation made by Chad GPT. So let's let's go like check this stuff. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go straight to images Okay, well, um, I'm seeing pictures <laughs> that is the most epic picture ever. Oh my god. Okay It's like mud skippers like singing. Okay, uh, so that looks like it's actually a thing Let's let's just double check again this time. We're gonna go to Wikipedia uh, so we've got Wikipedia here. Let's open this up. Yeah, that's it. That is it. What's this here say though? Uh, I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna say, can you break this down into its its parts? So it says Tan Tu Yu refers to mud skippers, a type of fish known for their ability. Okay, so. Hmm, this is one of those hard ones because it's a pretty obscure word and like these types of things, they can make mistakes. I might text my wife. <laughs> so I've just sent this message to my wife. Now, for those who don't know, my wife is a Chinese speaker, but she hates teaching, which is why I actually use AI to learn. She's going to receive this and be like, what is he do? Why is he talking about mud skippers? Anyway. Um, I actually burnt a good eight minutes just on this one topic. Now I'm going to focus on actual words that are going to be useful in like 99% of my Chinese life. But you know, you got to have fun. You can't just be like, well, this is the 1000 most common word. So I'm just going to learn this. No, you got to make it fun because otherwise you go insane. There's too many words. Okay. So I'm going to scrap this for now. We'll worry about mud skippers when I get a reply from the wife. Okay guys, wife responded. She said, I don't even know what that animal is. Why are you learning such useless words? You learned something useful, you idiot. <laughs> ah! Okay, I'm going to learn the word for platypus instead. Ugh. So mundane. So everyday animal. We finally cracked it, boys. So uh, after much persistence, my wife finally cracked and she told me that the word is e tell 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 you which means a uh, jump jump fish so i searched online and yeah that seems to be a, a common word for it so she did know she just didn't want to teach me anyway i'm about 30 cards created well 30 like of the cards i intend to create in however i'm only introduced like six new words so I, i've got to probably make more today to introduce more words because i like to aim for about eight new words so I've created the list of sentences, which I'll now turn into audio cards. In total, there's 42. However, I'm only actually introducing six new words, which is not really that many. It's less than normal, but I am introducing a few new grammatical structures. One grammatical structure is like 
both A and B. So to do that in Chinese is like D A Yo B. So that's like a, a structure I want to practice quite a bit. And I've also got some words that I wanted to um, practice a little bit more in here. Uh, this one's a little bit more scattered today because I just wanted to have some fun with it. So I'm going to quickly pump out the audio cards and then the next time you guys will see me will probably be after work, after the gym, because I've got a gym tonight. Um, and then I'm going to do the German cards then. Hey guys, so it's uh, 8.07 p.m. at night right now. I've finished at the gym. I've just had a shower. Um, and as you can see on this other screen over here, I've actually started just already putting this video together. I'm just going to put something else up on there because it's going to be weird just looking at myself. There you go. I'm going to put some code there. Uh, so we're going to focus on German. And what I'm thinking of doing based on my German reviews is I want to review the, the who, what, where, why, those types of words uh, a lot more and create a lot more sentences around them because they're just, they're similar to English, but they're similar in the wrong ways. <laughs> So they're like, they create a lot of false friends just there. So first up, I'm just going to close that mirror as well. Ugh. Okay, I feel a lot better about that. I don't like people seeing inside my cupboard. Okay, so also, I got this book while I was over in uh, China. I went to the Esperanto Museum over there. It's called the Concisa Historia de la China Esperanto Movado. It's the concise history of the Chinese Esperanto movement. I wanted to show you this because in a video coming up, I plan to actually show you guys how I study at a much higher level in Esperanto uh, because someone actually asked about that in the comments today for my previous video. So just letting you know that's going to come, but it's not going to come in this video right now. So, we're going to do German. Well, you know what we're going to do. We're going to open up our good old notepad, like we do. Notepad is the most powerful tool in existence. And I'm going to open up a new chat with ChatGPT. I guess I should probably rotate this camera so you can see my screen, eh? Yeah, that'd be smart. There we go. Look at that. And maybe hide those drinks so I don't look like some type of weird alcoholic. Okay, so I want to do some of the who, what, where, when, what words. So first up, I don't know the word for like um, brother and sister in German, funnily enough. So I'm just going to say, uh, how do you say uh, the brother? The reason uh, in German. The reason I always say the in front of nouns is because I want to learn uh, the de, dir, das, you know, those actual articles along with the word itself. So it just says the Buddha, I guess that's how it's pronounced. My pronunciation in German is shocking at the moment. So the brother. And we're going to do the same thing for how, how do you say the sister? It's actually quite interesting that I haven't learned these like really basic words when I know other things like, you know, lawyer and even nurse and plumber and words like that because for some reason, at those moments, I wanted to learn those words. But right now, I'm just like, hey, you know what? I want to learn these words. So we're going to just start making our list and going through this. And you guys get the idea about how this pretty much works. So I'm going to disappear for a bit, build out my deck, and you'll see me in a bit. Okay, guys. So I've just created, uh, I think it's, actually, I wrote down how much it is. I've created 39 new sentences for German. Uh, and I've got a total of nine new words. I didn't do anything fancy today. I just kind of stuck with like basic stuff that I should know, but I haven't learned. So like uh, family relations and, um, you know, general introductions and stuff like that. Stuff I, I should realistically know like long ago, but I just, I always jump into crazy stuff, learning about things that are really not <laughs> that needed at that stage in my in my journey, I guess. But yeah, today I just felt like, eh, just doing the normal stuff, which is cool, because I need it. So I'm going to make the audio cards now, and then we'll wrap up with one last um, spiel on something. So I've just finished with my German study, and German is such a perplexing language, mainly because... I'm... Mainly because of the pronouns at the moment. So you've got the pronoun Z, which means she, Oh my god, and the pronoun, um, yeah, which means he, and that's in like, in the subject position, but then when it goes, what, what's going on? I've now got the, I've got the cat now coming at me. <laughs> yeah. Okay guys, I'm going to have to cut this video short. I've, I've got cats, I've got food, I've got... 
I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>